In this Northern Brewer video, Nitro Beer 101, a how-to on serving beer on nitrogen. Putting your beer on nitro is easy and results in an absolutely beautiful pour. We'll show you the equipment you'll need to upgrade your system for nitrogenated beer and walk you step by step through the process, including some very important do's and don'ts. What's going on everybody? It's Chip and William. We're here at Northern Brewer Cheers. HQ. We are drinking a dry Irish stout on nitro that we yeah. brewed ahead of St. Patrick's Day festivities. And when we were putting this on nitro a couple of weeks ago, we were like, wait, perfect opportunity to tell the story, to share the process with people. Cause it really is easy. Couple pieces of equipment, little change in your carbonation process and voila, beautiful proper pours yeah. of some of the world's most classic styles. Right? Yeah, especially for a dryer stout, it makes all the difference. Before we dive into it, if you're a fan of product demo and FAQ videos and want to see more of them in your feed, please like this video, subscribe to Northern Brewers YouTube channel, and share it with your friends. Before we look at the equipment and the process, William, real quick, kind of what's the difference between nitro and CO2 when it comes to serving beer, that mouthfeel, and then even what's the difference between nitro and beer gas, because we hear both of them in this conversation. Yeah. Um... Keeping it simple, CO2 and nitrogen, the big difference is that bubble size. Nitrogen is going to be a lot smaller, um, so you get those that tighter foam head on there, and also it lends that creamy feeling that you get. CO2 is just bigger bubbles um, and doesn't get that same nice dense foam that you're looking for and gives you that, you know, high carbonated beers, you get that prickliness where nitrogen you do not. A little smoother. They also yep. say the small bubbles are good for, like, foam stability. In some stouts, it may not disappear the entire session yeah again yeah. because there's not as much escaping right yeah i mean you, sometimes like i think with nitrogen beers you get the best like that beer beer clean glass where you get the little bit of rim every time you take a guzzle or yeah. sip difference between nitro and beer gas yeah so nitrogen is just a hundred percent nitrogen uh most of the time we talk about beer gas when we talk about putting beers on nitro or nitrogenating beers uh beer gas is most common that's what the commercial industry uses um, for carbonating and serving and then also they use it just for beer length to help keep that co2 in solution because they're generally drawing longer lengths for their tap systems of the draft lines yeah where homebrewers we have shorter lines we don't need to worry about that so homebrewers can get away with using co2 then nitrogen or just going the pro brewer route and going straight beer gas, which is going to be 70% nitrogen and 30% uh, CO2. Other parts of the country also have 75% nitrogen and 25% CO2, completely interchangeable. There's a rare case out there that um, they have a different blend and it's actually higher CO2 to nitrogen. Just look out for that. That's what you don't want. So whether you choose 100% nitrogen or this beer gas kind of blend, Let's look at the equipment you're going to need. First up, you're going to need a nitrogen cylinder. This is most often the five pound nitrogen cylinder. You're going to need a nitrogen regulator, a little bit different from what we're used to on the CO2 world, right? Yep, yep. Nitrogen's high pressure, so you're going to have a high pressure rate uh, regulator. Um, the threads are inverse of CO2, so you cannot thread one onto the other. Um, and again, this nitrogen regulator and tank can be worked with 100% nitrogen or that beer gas blend. You're also gonna need gas and liquid line connector kit. You probably already have this lined up in your draft system uh, in, if you already have beer on tap, but you'll need these if you're starting from scratch. More importantly than anything in this system, you're gonna need a new tap or the stout faucet. These are pretty iconic for these kind of beers. Um, tell us really quick what's in the actual stout faucet. So it makes it different. Yeah, the main difference is going to happen right down here. There is a restrictor plate, which is often called the sparkler. Um, it's a, just a little disc with a bunch of holes to break up that flow to give you that cascading uh, foam effect. Um, and then right after that is a flow straightener, which brings that flow back together so you're still pouring a nice mm. pour. Um, oh, okay. It like breaks it up and then kind of brings it back. Yep, <laughs> yep, yep. It's kind of weird, but uh, that's how it works. Um, that's really the main difference. As you see in the video, this attaches to your normal shank just like normal. If you want to keep your tap handles, you can just unscrew a regular tap handle and put it on here too. So it's really 
kind of the nitty gritty is down in the faucet. Um, there's stuff up here that you can service and everything, um, but otherwise the main focus is kind of that sparkler or restrictor plate. So if you're starting from scratch, all of these components are available in our nitrogen kegging system, which we will link in the video description below. The process, the first thing to know is there's nothing really different about the way you brew or ferment these beers. Yes, you might with time change a recipe because you like the way, oh, this is actually a better mouthfeel if I take this out. Sure. Point being Dial though, it in. these are just regular beers. The change of process begins upon carbonating the beer. The first thing you need to know is do not carbonate this beer like you would a beer you plan on serving on CO2, which would be, you know, 12 or 13 for a couple of weeks or as high as 30 for two days here we're yeah. aiming very very low william was telling me um when i was getting these put together he said carbonate them to two one and a half to two volumes of carbonation which when i looked at the handy dandy carbonation chart that i found online that was about five psi so a very big difference i mean heck most people still serve beers at like eight <laughs> Yeah. So you're you're kind of carbonating this very mildly with the understanding that in the second phase of its life on tap, the nitrogen is pushing and yep. doing work on the mouthfeel, right? Yeah. So for this, we did, um, like, like we talked about earlier, we did it with CO2 and nitrogen and also beer gas to show that both ways are, the, are options and that the outcome is the same. Um, so... Honestly, we needed to order nitrogen and beer gas, so we started carbonating with CO2 to not lose time. So that's how we did it with CO2 and nitrogen. If you were gonna go 100% beer gas, just omit that CO2 or do the CO2 and hook up the, the beer gas and start serving right away. If you're carbonating 100% with that beer gas, 30 to 35 PSI. Oh, yeah. Five to 10 days, seven to 10 days, um, and it should be good to go. And you leave it at that serving pressure then. Yeah, that's a big thing. If you're using beer gas, that PSI goes way high right from the very beginning. Yep, yep. Same Whereas with, with nitrogen. Yeah. Um, so talk about, real quick, just subbing out the stout faucet. Yeah, so the just subbing out the faucet, I mean, it's super easy. You take your uh, faucet wrench and just unscrew whatever faucet you have on there, and then um, it's really... If it's a new faucet, you're gonna to wanna to hook it up. Um, I always recommend just squirting a little star sand in there, make sure all the connections are clean and sanitized. Uh, put it in there and just tighten that ring back down. Use the faucet wrench just to make sure it's tight and no leaks. And then if it's a new faucet, go ahead and run a cleaner and sanitizer through there just to make sure that it's clean. You always wanna get off what any factory might have left behind, make sure it's ready to be serving beer. With the stout faucet on and your beer in the keg, maybe it's mildly carbonated. If you're using nitro, maybe it's just on beer gas um, or you plan on putting it on beer gas. You got the tank, the regulator goes on top. We're suggesting anywhere from 30 to 35 PSI for pushing this beer. We shot this video and these photos outside of the actual keg cooler because we wanted y'all to be able to see exactly how we had it set up, but it's very minimal setup there's nothing really different than if you were doing a one-off keg in a refrigerator yeah yeah i mean if you already have a setup it's as simple as unscrewing that gas line from the co2 regulator and moving it to that nitrogen regulator it's super easy so now you get the beer pouring through this super fancy stout faucet we're going to talk a little bit how to pour this because it's kind of different than most carbonated beers there are two schools of thought um, for these pours the traditionalists we'll do what they call like a two-part pour. That's pouring about three quarters, and we're talking about pouring it straight down also. They'll set the glass down, pour it straight down, do about three quarters of it, let it set, rest for about a minute, get that beer and foam separated, then they'll top it off. Um, this kind of helps the presentation. It helps make sure that the foam is very nice, big cap of foam that you can control a little bit better than if you were doing 100%. A little bit of history. This actually comes from Guinness. When they would pour stouts off of casks back in the day, they would have an older, stale cask of stout and a brighter, more lively cask. And they would kind of blend the two to get that perfect presentation of really foamy head, nice foamy mouthfeel. In modern times, beer tenders are kind of following that because they just want a little better control 
overdoing most of it and then topping off with a little bit more control, um, making sure there's a nice fluffy head and also as a little tip of the hat to the cask heritage of this. Because if you think about it, nitro is really, as we'll talk about in a minute, it's really kind of a way of doing cask yeah, it's a without modern, doing cask. Modern mimicking of it. Yeah. Right. A more modern take is people will do the classic start at 45 degree, when it gets about midway up, kind of tip it up, then put it down and let it settle. But I am a big fan after having worked at Summit where their oatmeal stout on nitro is just kind of one of their their claims to fame. Like they always do it straight down and then you just sit there and watch it <laughs> like a kid watching a snow globe. <clears throat> then they do the top off. Let's talk real quick about the beer, the effect on the beer. It's, it's smooth. Um, it's not flat, no. but it's definitely not a carbonated stout in this case. And you, as you said, you get these little ringlets, like you can kind of see yeah. the rings of the tree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was a well-brewed beer by someone too. <laughs> I feel like it often also just kind of really emphasizes malt flavors. I don't yeah. know why. Yeah. And uh, we'll talk about styles and everything yeah. in a little bit. Um, well, let's talk about it. I mean, you can... It helps with low, lower ABV beers too, I think. That creamy mouthfeel kind of can cover up some of that uh, watery or thinner mouthfeels they have. Obviously, yeah. these have flake barley, so that's helping with it and everything. But this bumps it up. Yeah. Any style can theoretically be put on nitro, but you see it a lot with more with these Irish and English styles. We're talking your dry Irish stouts, Irish red ales, I think... Milds. Any, milds are like built for this. Bitters. Even English pale ales. Uh, again, though, we were talking <laughs> beforehand. <sighs> Hoppy beers, IPAs, one of the better beers I've had this year was um, from Bent Paddle. They had a nitro IPA on, but then you said, not a fan. I'm not a fan of them. I'm uh, not of Bent Paddle. But no, I, <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> of, hoppy beers on nitro. I should say aromatic, flavorful, hoppy beers on mm. nitro. Um, there are studies that suggest that, that the way the nitrogen works, it actually suppresses some of that aroma. So by doing that, you're suppressing what you're really looking for in that beer. Science. <laughs> <laughs> um, other beverages here at HQ, Carlos keeps um, nitrogenated cold-pressed coffee yeah. on for the masses all the time yep and that you should do straight nitrogen with oh you'll taste that co2 bite a little bit more mm, okay so nitro you can do both but it's going to be better with nitro <laughs> nitro only if you're doing the coffee so if you think that's something you might branch out and do maybe think about the mild carbonation step then the nitro so that you have the same equipment any other do's and don'ts we definitely talked about not over carbonating Yep, that's one of the biggest ones, especially if you're doing the CO2 first and then going to nitrogen or beer gas because you can't overcarbonate with nitrogen and that's hard with the CO2 with the beer gas because of the blend. Um, that's kind of one of the biggest thing that comes to mind because you'll just, you'll have a foamy mess. Don'ts, I don't know about much else don'ts. It's all do. Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. Try nitrogenating anything. I don't know. Yeah. Oat milk, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got some of that V8 on nitro? All right, before we go too far off the rails. Um, so all of these items are available a la carte at northernbrewer.com, or as we said, the nitrogen, I always want to say nitrogenated kegging system, but the nitrogen kegging system has everything you need for uh, getting nitro beers on tap in your existing yep. system. If you're making stouts, you should have a nitrogen faucet, I think. But that modern way of pouring it, it's almost like if you're going to go through the effort to brew this very special beer, it should be visually yep. kind of tr yep. tradition yep. too. You can wait that extra minute for the foam to settle, top it up, drink it in and enjoy it. It's a 4% beer, so you might as well enjoy it because you're <laughs> not getting loaded quickly. <laughs> All right, cheers, y'all. <laughs>